Baker's dozen means 13. In the past, bakers were severely punished for baking underweight loaves. So sometimes they would add a thirteenth loaf to a batch of a dozen, just to be above suspicion. We say bite the bullet because sometimes wounded soldiers were given a bullet to bite on during an operation. We say coals to Newcastle because once coals were brought from Newcastle to London by sea. They were called sea coals. And sending coals to Newcastle was obviously a pointless exercise. We say the bitter end because anchor cable used to be tied to posts called bits. The last piece of anchor cable was called the bitter end. So if you let the anchor cable out all the way to the bitter end, there was nothing further you could do. You had no more resources. Why do we say beyond the pale? Well, in the 15th century, the English king controlled Dublin in Ireland and the surrounding area, which was known as the pale. Anyone beyond the pale was seen as wild and dangerous. Why do we say you make a bean line for something? It's because in the past people thought that bees flew straight towards their hive. So if you make a bee line for something, you go straight towards it. This cloud cuckoo land comes from a play by the ancient Greek writer Aristophanes. It was called The Birds, and in it the birds decide to build a utopian city they call Cloud Cuckoo Land. Why do we say cut and run? Because in an emergency sailors would cut the anchor cable, which was originally a rope, and run with the wind. Why do we say he passed with flying colours? Because on a sailing ship the colours are the flag. And if a fleet won a great battle, the ships would sail back to port with their colours flying proudly from the masts. At sea a ship surrendered by lowering its flag. So if you nailed your colours to the mast, you had no intention of surrendering and you were totally loyal to your side. When pirates approached another ship, sometimes they flew a fa false flag to hide their identity. But when they got close to the other ship and it was too late for it to escape, they showed their true colours, the Jolly Roger. Why do we say sent to Coventry? It's probably because during the English Civil War in the 17th century, royalist prisoners were sent to Coventry. And while they were there, they were shunned and nobody would speak to them. What the Dickens has nothing to do with the writer, Charles Dickens. Dickens was a nickname for the devil. So it meant, what the devil? People also said, what the heck? Heck was said instead of hell. Wasn't quite polite to say hell, but people also said golly or gosh instead of God. We say down at heel because if the heels on your shoes were worn down, you would probably have a shabby appearance. Why do we say crocodile tears? Because in the Middle Ages, people believed that when a crocodile caught a man, killed him and ate him, he wept while he ate the man. But of course, his tears were insincere. Died in the wool. Wool died before it was woven, kept its colour better than wool dyed after it was woven. That was called dyed in the piece. Why do we say flash in the pan? A musket had a priming pan full of gunpowder. When flint struck steel, a spark ignited the gunpowder in the priming pan. That, in turn, ignited the main charge of gunpowder in the barrel that fired the musket ball. But sometimes the gunpowder in the priming pan went off, but it didn't ignite the charge of gunpowder, and the musket didn't fire. In that case, you had a flash in the pan. We also say lock, stock and barrel because a gun had three parts. The lock was the firing mechanism, 
the stock was the wooden butt at the back and it had a barrel. So lock, stock and barrel came to mean the whole lot. Why do we say freelance? Because in the Middle Ages, some knights were mercenaries. They hired themselves out and they fought with lances. They were literally free lances. Why do we say long in the tooth? It's because when a horse ages, its gums recede, so it becomes long in the tooth. Why do we say to wear your heart on your sleeve? It's because in the Middle Ages, when knights fought in tournaments, a knight would hold a token of his lady on his sleeve, attached to his sleeve. And in time, to wear your heart on your sleeve came to mean make your feelings obvious. We also say never look a gift horse in the mouth because it would be rude if somebody gave you a horse as a gift to look into the horse's mouth to see its age. And we say get it straight from the horse's mouth. A horse seller might lie to you about a horse's age but if you look in the horse's mouth you get the truth straight from the horse's mouth. A different kettle of fish. Today a kettle is a device for boiling water, but once a kettle was simply a kind of cooking pot. Unfortunately nobody knows for certain exactly why we say a different kettle of fish. Why do we say lick into shape? Because in the Middle Ages people thought that bear cubs were born shapeless and the mother bear literally licked them into shape. Hoist by your own petard. A petard was a kind of bomb with a fuse that you placed next to a wooden gate. However, if it went off too soon, you would be blown into the air. You are hoist by your own petard. We say pin money because men literally gave their wives and daughters money to buy pins for their clothes and other essentials. Why do we say pay on the nail? In the Middle Ages, nails were flat-topped columns. If a buyer and seller agreed a price for something, the money was paid on the nail. It was actually placed on the nail so everyone could see what was going on. Eat humble pie. Originally it was to eat humble pie. Humble spelt without an H. It meant the intestines and the other innards, less tasty innards of an animal. So when a deer was hunted, the rich ate the meat, the venison, and the servants were given the umbles. They ate humble pie. He's gone to pot. In the past, any farm animal that outlived its usefulness, like a hen that could no longer lay eggs, literally went to the pot. It was cooked and eaten. We also say pot luck. Well, in the past, often all kinds of food were mixed and cooked in a big pot. And if you sat down with a family to eat a meal, you had to take pot luck. You couldn't be certain what you were eating. Why do we say read the riot act? Because by an act of 1715, if more than 12 people gathered, a magistrate read out an official document telling them to disperse. If they hadn't gone home or gone away, after one hour they could be arrested. Why do we say red letter days? Because saints days used to be marked in red on calendars. Nobody worked on saints days, they were also called holy days. And in time holy day became holiday. Red tape comes from the days when official documents actually were bound with red tape. Why do we say spick and span? Well today it means neat and tidy, but once the saying was spick and span new. A span was a wood shaving and a spick was a nail. If you bought something made of wood and it still had wood shavings on it and the nails were nice and shiny, then it was obviously new. But in time, the phrase shortened to spick and span and it came to mean neat and tidy. Why do we say a red herring? Well, herrings went red when they were cured. Now, people like poachers would drag 
a red herring along the ground to disguise their scent or hide it from dogs. Why do we say rule of thumb? Because in the past craftsmen would use their thumb as a rough form of measurement. Why do we say you need to know the ropes? Because on an old wooden sailing ship there were a huge number of ropes with different purposes. So to be a sailor you needed to know the ropes. It rings true or it doesn't ring true. That's from the days when the value of a coin depended on the amount of precious metal like gold or silver in it. If it was made of pure precious metal when you dropped it it would make a particular ringing sound. It would ring true. Money for old rope means money for something seemingly worthless. In the past you didn't throw away your old rope, you sold it. People picked apart old rope with their fingers, that was called picking oakum, and the rope was recycled. So you got money for old rope. Why do we say spinning a yarn? Because rope makers used to stand next to each other when they were spinning yarns of rope and they used to talk while they worked. Sometimes they told each other rather unlikely stories. So, if you're telling an unplausible story, you're spinning a yarn. Why do we say straight-laced? Well, straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, meant narrow or loose. Women used to hold their clothes together with laces. So if a woman was straight-laced, her laces on her clothes were very tight and so she was prim and proper. Why do we say throw down the gauntlet? On a suit of armour, the gauntlet was a glove. So if you threw down the gauntlet, you were challenging somebody to a duel. He's swinging the lead. On a sailing ship, a sailor used to swing a lead weight and throw it overboard. Attached to the wed lead weight was a long rope with knots tied at intervals. You counted how many knots disappeared below the sea level and that told you how deep the sea is. But swinging the lead was an easy job. So if you were trying to avoid work, you were swinging the lead. He was given short shrift. To shrive meant to confess your sins. So if you gave somebody short shrift, you gave them a short time to confess their sins before they're executed. It's also why we say Shrove Tuesday. People shrove or confess their sins before Lent. He got the sack. In the past, workmen carried their tools in a sack. So if the boss gave you the sack, it was time to collect your tools and go. Start from scratch. In a race, a, a line was scratched on the ground and the racers would start from the scratch. Why do we say sold a pup? Because if you bought a piglet, the seller would put the piglet in a bag, but sometimes when his hands were out of sight, he would slip a puppy into a bag and give that to you. So you were sold a pup. Sometimes the seller would slip a cat into a bag. If you let the cat out of the bag, you expose the deception. A pig in a poke is something bought without checking it first. A poke was a type of bag, but if you bought a poke with a pig in it, it might turn out the pig was actually a puppy or a cat slipped in by the seller. To turn over a new leaf, means to make a new start, but it has nothing to do with the leaves on trees. The leaf was a page in a book, so you turn over a new leaf in a book and start again. Scot free has nothing to do with Scotland. Scot is an old word for a payment, so if you got away scot free, you got away without paying. I have no truck with them. Originally truck meant barter, so if you had no truck with somebody, you refused to trade with them. In time it came to mean you had nothing to do with them. Through thick and thin was originally through thicket and thin wood. 
meaning you made your way through dense wood, then through wood with th more thinly placed trees. Weasel words comes from an old belief that a weasel could suck out the contents of an egg and leave the eggshell intact. To win hands down comes from horse racing. If a jockey was a long way ahead of his competitors, then he could relax and put his hands down at his sides. A lot of old sayings come from the Bible. Apple of my eye comes from Psalms. I escaped by the skin of my teeth comes from Job. A little bird told me comes from Ecclesiastes.